God up in this place with you. And if you love Jesus, then you know he woke you up this morning. And he's going to keep you on your way. You're going to have a praise for the time to take. So come on, praise God in this place. Yeah. Pray, I say here we is up in this place. Praise God in this place.
Now let's stop right there before we move forward. Now out of all the things that Jesus was doing while he walked the earth, how many people do you think he actually got undressed in front of? Think about it. All the miracles that Jesus was performing while he walked the earth, all the things he was saying, all the words he was preaching, all the people that he helped, how many people do you think Jesus got undressed in front of? What Jesus was trying to show his disciples was that I want you to have a special closeness with me. I want you to become intimate with me. Means I want our relationship to be very personal. This is the same thing that Jesus wants from us. He wants you to, to, to get to a place in your life to where your relationship becomes very personal with him. But a lot of time, the only time we come in the presence of God or we even seek God is when we're in trouble or when we feel we're forced to. God wants you to come to him on your own free will with a pure heart. Say, call on him out of a pure heart and a conscious mind. The disciples didn't understand quite yet what was going on, but Jesus told them, he said, what I do now, you know not now, but you will know later. And not only does Jesus want us to become intimate with him, when we become intimate with him, he also wants us to intimate. Now we know that intimacy, this is a close personal relationship, but when you become intimate, he wants you to intimate, meaning to announce it, to proclaim it, to confess his name, to let others know that he is your Lord and Savior. King Solomon. You know a lot of you know about the story. Queen of Sheba came to King Solomon and she kept hearing so many good things about him and heard about all his wisdom and all his riches and all this. And she said, well, you know what? I got to come and see for myself. And this is the same thing that God wants you to do about him. God wants you to seek his wisdom. Seek the things of God. See, because God can give you riches beyond any and all. He said, once we belong to him, we are joint heirs with Christ. And we shall reign as he reigned in his heavenly kingdom on the side of him. Amen? But the problem is we get too caught up with the riches of this world. You might see somebody on the side of the street and you say, oh, they're poor. Might have on raggedy, dirty clothes. Might even be smelling. Might have uh, you know, had a chance to groom themselves for a long time. But you don't know where their mind and heart is. They probably wake up every morning thinking about Jesus. Walking and talking all day with Jesus. Going to sleep thinking about Jesus. Dreaming about Jesus. Trying to tell people that they're passing by about Jesus. Because they are rich in God. But we get so caught up worrying about the worldly riches. The Queen of Sheba told Solomon in 2 Chronicles 9 and 7, and say, Happy are thy men, and happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and hear thy wisdom. See, a lot of people know about the wisdom and the riches of King Solomon, but what a lot of preachers fail to emphasize is that King Solomon was also a preacher. He was a preacher. So when he stood before the people sharing God's wisdom, he was preaching to them. The word of God say, happy are thy servants which stand, notice the word stand, which stand continually before thee 
and hear thy wisdom. But a lot of people don't want to stand before God. Say, but it brings happiness. It brings joy when you continually being fed God's wisdom. Because no matter what you're going through in your life, you can find comfort in the word of God. But in order to do that, you have to begin to seek the word of God. And ask God for revelation knowledge and spiritual discernment so you can know what the word of God is telling you. To be a servant of God, much is required. Like I said before, we're willing to suffer for the things of the world. We're willing to take penitentiary chances instead of go back and forth to jail for, for, for doing the things that please us. We're we willing to, to, to get our lights turned off and all these type of things because we steady spending our money getting high. We willing to, to uh, uh, risk having all of our loved ones and friends and these and that mad at us because we're not worried about nobody but us. We're not worried about how the people feel and care about us. But the word of God tells us to esteem others higher than yourself. But a lot of us can't get to that point because the only thing we know is me, 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 and I, I, I. We have to begin to esteem others higher than ourselves to be a servant of God. When it comes to God's business, a lot of times this is hard also. Our feelings, our emotions, different things happen to us in our life, different tragedies, different situations, incidents where we feel people have let us down. And instead of allowing that to strengthen us through the power of God, Christ Jesus, we use that as a reason to say, well, you know what, I don't want to do this no more. You're looking at what people are doing to you yes. instead of what you should be doing for them. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Come on. We have to place our feelings on the back burner if we want to be a good and faithful servant to God. Because if we leave it up to us, every time we turn around, every excuse we can use, we'll be like, well, I was going to do this for God, but now nah, I ain't going to do that no more. I was going to do this for God, but such and such hate me. I was going to do this for God, but such and such didn't call me when it was supposed to. I was going to do this for God, but my money ain't right. I was going to do this for God, but I just don't feel like it right now. Anything we can think of, we try to use as an excuse not to do what God wants us to do. We got to get our feelings off our shoulders and move forward in God, forgetting those things that are behind us, pressing forward towards the mark for the high calling of Jesus Christ. Second Philippians 2, 7 says, it's talking about Jesus, it, it, it says, it, uh, uh, 2, 6, it says that Jesus started not robbery to be equal with God. Because he is God manifested in the flesh. But 2 Philippians 2, 7 says, But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. That's another thing we have a problem with. We can't do what God wants us to do because we worried about our reputation. Well, man, I got a reputation for, for shooting people and, and, and fighting. Man, I got a reputation for making a bunch of money and selling dope. Man, I got a reputation for having a bunch of women. I got a reputation for having a bunch of men. I got a reputation for this and a reputation for that. So if I start to serve God, that's going to mess up my reputation. Sometimes... You end up trying to protect a reputation that you're not even really willing to accept that you that you got on you. You know, you know what, what, what you're known for. 
Come on now, you know what people say about you on the cool. Come on now. Come on church, talk to me. You know what I'm talking about. But sometimes you be, we be so stuck in what people think about us and how people feel about us that we can't move forward in the days of God. But for this very same reason, Jesus said he made himself of no reputation and took on the form of a servant. There's a lot of people in here right now that got good hands-on training with being servants. If you if you into the customer service field, if you a waiter or waitress, you ever been in that field of uh, healthcare, I know some of y'all in healthcare, this, that, you know what it is to be a servant. You know what it is to help people when they in need. Or when people call your phone and they mad at everybody but you, but they taking it out on you. But you still got to do your job. You still got to help the people. You still got to comfort the people and let them know that it's going to be all right. This is the same thing that God wants his servants to do. No matter what you face with, no matter what obstacles are in your way, God wants you to be a servant to him. He wants you to have the mind and the heart to help people. I don't care how many times they kick you. I don't care how many times they spit in your face. I don't care how many times they stab you in your back. I don't care how many times they cut you out and slander you. I don't care how many times they disappoint you and let you down and make you feel like you're the scum of the earth. God still wants you to be a servant. God still wants you to help people. Every time you turn around, the servant of God is being stepped on. The servant of God is being talked about. The servant of God is being stabbed in the back. But God wants you to continue to be obedient. short 
there were two teenagers that we extended our hospitality to and they turned their back on us, tried to fight us, cussed us out. I'm talking about just dogged us out real bad. A couple of them called themselves trying to jump me, click on me or whatever, uh, but neither one of them wanted to go one-on-one -on -one and, and then the whole family had them running down the street. Yeah. But it's just, it's just something how when you extend your hospitality to people, these are some of the main ones that stab you in the back. I'm talking about people that you love on hard. People that you invite into your home, give them a place to sleep. People that you feed. People that you put money in their pocket. People that you pray for. These are some of the main ones that stab you in the back. But God don't want you to give up. He said because in due season you will reap if you faint not. God wants you to continue to be a giver. God wants you to continue to be a helper. He wants you to continue to be a servant. Scripture readers, turn to Jeremiah 21. Keep your thumb right there in John. Keep your thumb right there in John. 13, keep your thumb right there. But scripture readers, turn with me to Jeremiah 21. Chapter 4, when you have it, say amen. Jeremiah 21, verse 4. When you have it, say amen. I don't want to leave nobody behind. Jeremiah 21, chapter 4, and it reads, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith ye fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, which besieged you without the walls. And I will assemble them into the midst of this city. And I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. And I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. And afterwards said the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants and the people and such as are left in this city from the pestilence from the sword, and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword. He shall, he shall not spare them, neither have pity, nor have mercy. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I set you before the way of life and the way of death. And I'm going to read this one description. I throw that in there too. It's uh, Jeremiah 19.5. It says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks that they might not hear my words. So once again, a lot of people who really not into the word of God, or who denying some of the power of God. You know, they, the Bible tells us about those that have a form of godliness, but denying the power to have. God creates good and evil. And right here in his word, he said that if you don't do what he told you to do, he will bring evil upon you. He said the weapons of war that are in your hand, he will turn against you. And he said, the people that you're fighting up against that can't get to you because of the wall, the hedge of protection they have around you, he said he will put them inside of that. And he'll take the hedge of protection away from you so that they will be right upon you. He said, your enemies that will, that will be on the walls, he said, I will assemble them in the midst of this city. So the place that God has you protected in, he said that if you don't do what he told you to do, he'll remove that wall. And he'll place your enemies right there in your face. And you won't 
willing to serve him. And then he goes on to say in his word that those that wasn't destroyed right away, he said he will give you into the hand of your enemies' enemies and let them deal with you. He said you will be, you will be killed by the sword, by the famine, by the pestilence, and all they say he shall not spare none and he will have no pity. But he goes on to say, he laid before you the road, the way to life, and the way to death. It's up to you which one you choose. Now flip back to John, and we're gonna wrap this on up. John 13, verse 12. When you have it, say amen. Verse John, I mean, uh, John 13, verse 12, it reads, So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Now this is Jesus talking. He said, Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. And that's part of the problem. Yeah. Reputation. Yeah. Man, I ain't washing nobody's feet. What's wrong with you? Man, you think I'm finna wash somebody's feet? This is the attitude yeah. that a lot of people have. But not only is he talking about a natural cleansing, he's mostly talking about a spiritual cleansing. He wants you to do your job. He wants you to be a servant to help continue to feed his people the word of God and continue to be an example so the light can shine through you so that you can reach other people. We're willing to get down and dirty in the street. But we don't want to get down and dirty for God. You got people out like there killing people because they say they want another strike in a game. You got people chopping people's head off because they say you standing in the way of me selling my dope. Mexican cartels and all these people. You got people walking up in the buildings with backpacks on, blowing themselves up and, and 20, 30, 90 other people with them. The word of God tells us, Jesus tells us, he said that would be a time when people should kill you and they think they're doing God a service. But they ain't doing God no service because they ain't not serving him. And if we're not doing the things God tells us to do, we ain't serving him either. So once again, God is giving you a choice on this morning. He's talking to each and every one of us in here. He said, serve him or be served to the end. That's the message for the Lord.